Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE NXT on January 18, 2017. And, um, you know, this show was not a bad show. You had some decent build going into the actual NXT TakeOver special. And they start out the show with a uh, with a match with Nikki Cross and, Ken, uh, I think it was Kendra Lu uh, Lewis. Uh, Nick, Nikki Cross wins this match rather qu uh, rather quickly, squash match style in every every sense of the word. Um, but it would not be the last that we see of Sanity th uh, throughout the night. This segment really didn't do much other than um, giving momentum towards uh, Nikki Cross going into the Fatal Four Way match. But uh, overall, not um, not a bad way of going. Uh, and some of the moves that uh, Nikki Cross has, I thought were pretty good to go along with it. So overall, not a bad segment. And like I said, it's not the last we see of Sanity to, uh, on on the show. But uh, up next, we had a couple of promo segments. Uh, you had No Way Jose cutting a promo talking about what 2017 was going to be like. And he gets interrupted by Kona Reeves, who brings up the aspect of when Sanity attacked him and Rich Swan a while back, and saying it's like you don't know anything about like you don't know anything about friendship and everything in that sense. Challenges him to a match in that, and uh, I believe that's something that is going to be happening next week. And then the revival were cutting a promo talking about how they're going to try to be getting back the tag team titles and trying to make wanting to make it a triple threat with um, with DIY the authors of pain and the revival at uh, at NXT Takeover. But uh, they get interrupted by TM61. Start they start cutting their uh, promo and everything to go along with it. And uh, not a bad segment. But overall, like, uh, I don't know what it is about TM61. I'm not too keen on their microphone skills at this point in time. It's just one of those uh, weird things that, uh, like, I know they're really good in the ring, but they feel, they, they feel super generic at this point in time. But they do challenge the Revival to a match, and that match happens a little bit later on, uh, was uh, signed off for later on in the show. Uh, Roderick Strong went up against Steve Cutler. Uh, Roger Strong went over in what was, you know, basically another uh, enhancement match in some way, shape, or form. But he does cut a promo on uh, Andreas and Almas at the end of, at, at the end, and kind of dis seem like dismissing him because he wants to go after the NXT title. But he makes mention this all loss in there. This was not a bad promo, and it does lead to an announcement later on in the night that you had, um, you have Roderick Strong going up against Andre Cien Almas at the uh, next NXT Takeover, which uh, honestly will, will not will probably not be too ba uh, too bad of a match. I really enjoyed where uh, Cien Almas has gone with his heel character and everything in that sense. And Roderick Strong, he's still kind of, uh, like, towards the NXT side, he's still rather new. I haven't watched a lot of his stuff in ROH yet and, and everything, but you could tell he's he's good. He's come in with uh, his own, he's come in with, like, name recognition and everything in that sense. And actually them using his uh, name from... Uh, ROH and everything in that sense to go along with it. So overall, uh, that should be a fun match to watch. Uh, Ember Moon and Lid Morgan have a promo backstage setting up a match for them next week. Um, Ember Moon, not a bad, uh, not a bad promo. Talking about how she was uh, initially saying, like, feeling that she was left out of this whole situation with the NXT Women's Title, but Liv Morgan kind of saying, it's like, hey, she feels like she's come a long way from her quick loss to Asuka, challenges her to a match, and they, they're they going to have that match next week. So, overall, not a bad promo. Like, these promos that we've been getting this week were rather quick ones, uh, like, with, them, with one person, but uh, with one person... Uh, cutting something really quick to say, say what they're trying to go for, but then all three of them getting interrupted by somebody else. I mean, that's one cork. They use the exact same thing each time to set up the match in some way, shape, or form. You used an interruption by somebody else, and that's how they're setting up these matches. Um, 
So that's one little gripe there. Like they use the exact same tactic three times. They could have come up with something else to go along with it, but whatever in that sense. Uh, I guess, but, uh, yeah, overall, not too bad, but, like I said, kind of overkill with the aspect of using three interruptions and backstage promos to set up the, uh, set up their matches. Um, up next, Ty Dillinger comes out, he starts cutting a promo, making it feel like he's gonna, like he, uh, you know, questioning, still questioning whether or not he belongs in NXT and everything like, in that sense, and this is where Sanity interrupts. Uh, Sanity interrupts. They come back. They come back out, and they have and they offer Ty Dillinger um, a spot in Sanity, which Ty Dillinger eventually um, de uh, denies and everything in that sense. I like where EY was going with everything. He was almost like he was trying to make it seem sensible towards Ty Dillinger to want to actually join Sanity instead of going the route that he's uh, typically been going in that sense of it but uh in the end like uh but in the end like it was um ty dillinger just giving him the 10 sign at the end and eventually you know attacking eric young was brings in the uh, uh alexander wolf from sanity to go along with it he's fighting them off and then he gets run over by big demo uh and demo basically uh, finishes off Ty Dillinger and then joins Sanity to go along with it. So uh, what we have been seeing for the past couple of weeks is, is kind of just like confirmed now that you know, like uh, Damo was trying to be a part of Sanity in every sense of the word. Uh, I like the aspect of how uh, Eric Young kind of just hands Damo the jacket and then Damo just throws it over his shoulder, and they kind of end it that way. It was not a bad way of going, and not a bad segment to go along with it. But, um, but if anything, uh, like I said, a very he uh, promo-heavy NXT this week with everything. Though we do get a few matches, most of them were kind of... Um, like, the two matches before TM61 and The Revival more kind of squash matches to go along with it just kind of building the other per uh building the other person this does bring us into tm61 against the revival um this is not a bad match not a bad match but uh it wasn't a great match by any stretch of the imagination i like tm61 and their in-ring and everything but their look like j just their look in general and how they come off promo wise right now, they come off very generic. Uh, they don't come off as anything, uh, anything special. Like you can make somebody feel like they're like an at, like they're the average fan and everything like that. But you can make them come off as something special. And you've seen that plenty of times, like the un the plucky underdog, is, but they make them feel like there's something special to it to go along with it. But you don't get that feeling with TM61 at this point in time, like they're good in-ring workers. And that's kind of it. And they win this they win this match, so they're obviously continuing something here with them in the uh, them in the revival. And uh, I'll be interested to see where they go along with everything. And maybe this can change kind of my outlook on TM61 and everything, because I know a lot of people end up liking this team. But at this point in time, I just I just I'm just not grasping them in some way, shape, or form, and it's. It's always unfortunate in that in that sense of everything, but I just don't. I'm not the biggest fans of where they or where they're going with everything. And obviously, they have time to change my mind and everything like that. L luckily, I leave an open mind, and if I see something that's good, that's just more than their in ring work, I'll, I'll point it out in the end. But uh, this leads to the main event of the night, which was uh, Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura, their contract signing, and you know. It, it was one of those things is like, how are they going to build the intensity going into the NXT TakeOver special? And they did it in this promo. I felt like the intensity that came of Bobby Roode and the interactions with him and Shinsuke came off rather well. And it came off in a way that made you feel like, okay, Bobby Roode wants to really go after 
uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Shinsuke wants to go after um, Bobby Roode in, in this case. And I just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the promo, the interactions between both guys. I like the aspect that when Bobby Roode goes to say glorious, Shinsuke Nakamura stops him. And then cuts his cuts his promo and finishes off with Bobby Roode's catchphrase. I thought it came off rather well. I even like the aspect that, uh, I, I, for whatever reason, I guess we've seen so many contract signings in the past that end with people coming to blows that it, it's kind of nice to always watch it where they don't come to blows. And it's just a nice, int- like a really intense promo between both guys. And I thought they did a relatively good job on that set in that sense here, building into the actual uh, NXT TakeOver, um, the actual NXT TakeOver match between the two of them. So I felt like they did a relatively good job here. So overall this week, um, a very he- uh, promo-heavy, very promo-heavy um, uh, NXT this week, uh, building into the NXT TakeOver special. Uh, and... It- I mean, in the end, it, it kind of does go with that aspect of it because they do build a couple more matches in there. Um, they they made the Roderick Strong, uh, Andre Cien Almas match. They make uh, Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young in there. The build up with um, with uh, with Shinsuke Nakamura and Bobby Roode. Also, the build up with a couple matches for next week to go along with it. Uh, uh, with that being said, like I said, this is a very promo heavy, less action oriented, um, uh, NXT this week, which has kind of been the, the shape of form of WWE this week is kind of more promo heavy than it was action oriented in most cases for their shows building into their either the NXT TakeOver Special or the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. So that's kind of where we've been going this week. Overall, not bad, not great, but kind of in the middle. Everything was kind of in the middle this week when it comes to WWE. So we'll see how everything goes off next week because this leads into the NXT TakeOver Special and then eventually the Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble pay-per-view to go along with it. And that is my review for WWE NXT this week. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.